This time, I have an interesting case for you on Makeup and Murder Monday. It is another local case about a man named Cleophus Cooksey Jr. Some would call this a serial killer case, but they would be wrong. Listen and find out why. Even though some might consider him a serial killer, he is not. He is considered a spree killer because of the cooling off period that he had, that he did not have. Uh, most serial killers kill over years and not over a three week period like, like he did. So he's considered a spree killer, not a serial killer. Um, they're just different motives usually and different um, reasons for, for killing. So his homicide started on November 27th. He killed two men on that day, Andrew Remillard and Parker Smith. On December 2nd, he killed Salem Richards. Um, uh, all of these men have been shot. On December 11th, um, he killed Jesus Real. And uh, three women have since been arrested for tampering with evidence in that particular case. On December 13th, he killed Latori Beckford, uh, died from multiple gunshot wounds. And then on December 15th, Christopher Cameron was killed, also died from several gunshot wounds. On December 15th, also Maria Villanueva was kidnapped at 58th Avenue, Avenue in Camelback and her body was found the very next day. Then on, the uh, police say they invested, started to investigate when an officer noted something suspicious about the first responding call to Cooksey. And so they decided to go ahead and look and see if it was him. Um, police Chief Jerry Williams said that the ballistic evidence collected from each of the homicide scenes all made sense that it was indeed Cookie Cooksey and tied him to all of the homicides. This is an ABC 15 news article that I got a lot of this information from, but I also went to like Wikipedia and stuff. Um, court records show that he had a previous criminal record. His previous criminal arrest record, um, was from about 16 years prior, and he had been arrested for robbery and manslaughter. So it's not like this guy didn't have, you know, um, some evidence that he already was kind of a, um, a violent guy. So he uh, had a seven, the detectives added seven additional counts of homicide, seven counts of prohibited use of a firearm, and one count of a sexually motivated kidnapping. Now, the interesting thing about Cleophus Cooksey Jr. is that he claims to be a, um, a born-again Christian who um, was doing some work as a um, I want to say a motivational speaker. He was kind of well known for his music um, and was just pretty much somebody that people knew in the valley, All the, which makes it even weirder that the stories about this kind of just faded away after that year, because I would think people would still be talking about it because um, there were people who knew him, obviously. Um, because he was kind of well-known in the Phoenix area, either for his social media presence, I'm not sure, I never looked that up, or for his music, or for what he did for the community. So it's a really kind of an interesting case that way. When the Phoenix New Times um, interviewed Cooksey, he told them he was a lover, not a fighter. Interesting. Um, and he said that he had a wonderful relationship with his mom. Um, he also said that even though he killed her, he still loved her very much. Um, and he said that he was a man of God. He's been reformed since he's been in prison or when he was in prison the first time. 
and that he saw light in other people and people saw light in him. He claimed to be a ladies man um, and said that when he was in high school, his nickname was Playboy. Um, when, but when detectives showed him a picture of Maria Villanueva, one of the victims, and told her she was dead and that his DNA was at the scene, he totally snapped. He said, I'm not gonna leave a woman dead. I wouldn't do that, I'm not like that, that's not me. I've never been that kind of person, I have no reason to do that. What would I get out of it? killing an innocent woman? What would? How would that help me? And then he kept saying, I love women, I love women. I even write songs about women. If you listen to my songs, you'll know that I love women and that I didn't do this. So they did go through and listen to some of his songs. Of course, I don't think just because you write songs about loving women means that you love them so much you're not going to kill them. Um, but when they asked him, well then is there a light side to you and a dark side to you? Are there basically two cooksies? Sorry that Hooch is going crazy over here with his toy. He doesn't ever do this except when I'm making videos, of course. Um, they said, nope, he's, Cooksy said, no, there's just one of me. Uh, I'm, I don't have two personalities or anything like that. So they were able to, in a three hour interview, come up with 345 pages of police reports. Um, and they said that they never got a motive for any of these fatal shootings. Um, unlike, um, you know, uh, the baseline killer where they were able to get a little more detail about that. But they said that this type of a crime where he killed that this many people is pretty close to what the baseline killer did. However, this is considered a spree killing. It is not considered a, um, a serial killing. They asked him, do you um, ever hear voices? Do you have any mental illnesses? And he kept saying, no, no, no. Um, but the neighbors say something different. They remember a very large uh, uh, argument, a very heated one, where they heard arguing about devils and demons, um, which he claims he did not do. Um, witness accounts also said that pretty much the same thing. There were bangs in the apartment. Um, it was actually a condo, but it used to be an apartment that my friend Angela lived in. Uh, I love that apartment um, complex. It was really cute and old fashioned and that is why this kind of stuck with me because I remember the place so well. Um, but inside the uh, condo, um, people recognized voices. One heard a man shouting at him using words like Satan. Um, some heard similar arguments from Cooksey within the past few months before this all happened. Um, could it be drugs? Could it be, I mean, what could it be? Then uh, there was a 911 call that they heard shots fired. Uh, they banged on it, announced a police president presence, and uh, Cooksey opened the door and said nothing was happening. Um, but he kept his right hand behind his back. Um, the authorities ordered him to come out with his hands up. And he started to reach for something to his right, but thought better of it. He cracked the door and squeezed through, um, never giving the authorities a glimpse of what lay behind him. Uh, the officer asked him where all the blood came from that they saw. Um, and he said he got a paper cut. Interesting. I got a paper cut yesterday and um, uh, no, no blood, no blood. Um, Anyway, so the officer had no backup, and so he took him in the best that he could. Um, he unclipped his stun gun and ordered Cooksey to the ground, and then um, used the stun gun. And um, the officer uh, 
and the officer was able to bring him in so that they could talk about uh, what had happened. Um, after backup arrived, um, they cleared the condo and found, um, what else did they find? They found beyond the um, condo lay a portal of horror, according to the Phoenix New Times. There was um, gore, corpses, blood everywhere. Renee Cooksey, his mother, his rock, as he called her, had a hole in the top of her head. But back in the interview room, Cooksey told detectives his grandfather started the Arizona Civil Rights Movement and he himself worked at the government and that he needed to call Trump because Trump had information about him and would get him a lawyer. So, of course, he is just a little... Um, crazy and probably needs some treatment, uh, but he claims that he is not. So, um, and let's see, and how it ended is, so in 2018, they were seeking the death penalty. Um, I am having trouble finding any information about whether or not that's what he was sentenced to. But if you know, can you drop it in the comments and let me know? It was a really interesting story because of the local aspect. Also because I've literally been in those apartments that were the uh, apartments of horror for him where he killed his mother and, um, and someone else. So the whole thing is just strange. But also the name Cleophus Cooksey Jr. is very hard to forget. Um, if you know any more about the case, let me know. And I will see you next time.